Hey, everybody. I'm here with the miserable liberal and Ron Placone. Hey, how are you? Hello. Howdy, howdy. So, um, Steph, you got a t-shirt on? Let's see. I, I might, hold on. Hold on. Let's see. Here we go. I, oh, let me move it. <laughs> there we go. There's, there's my t-shirt. Oh, Donnie Tanahans. Donnie Tanahans. I like it. Donnie Tanahans. Okay. So, um, <laughs> we're getting ready to do a uh, segment on how Donald Trump has turned his back on his uh, most ardent supporters uh, m- multiple times uh, almost at every chance to go along with his supporters he goes against them like when he bombed Syria he was supposed to be not an interventionist uh, when he drained the swamp except he put the swamp back in his cabinet uh, he's cutting taxes for t- Wall Street he said he was going to tax Wall Street so there's many ways that he is um, what can I say um, uh, betraying the people who put him in office but that just goes along with the Democrat. I mean, that the, the reason why Trump mm-hmm. is president is because the Democrats have been betraying the people who put them in office um, since Ronald Reagan. That's why. That's why he's there. And what do you mean by that? Well, people, you know, you can't be in bed with Wall Street and represent workers because Wall Street's agenda is to screw over workers, right? They want to extract wealth. They want to cut benefits. They want to take that job and send it to a robot. They want to give it to a poor person in a poor country. They want because they can make more. That's what Wall Street's agenda is. So you can't be in bed with their agenda and then say you care about workers because you don't. But Jimmy, when we lead with our values, we we can have an economy that works for everybody. For everybody. I thought. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Just don't ask how. Don't ask. It's a surprise. By the way, I was doing my Tom Perez on the Young Turks last night, and nobody knew who I, what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> nobody knew what I was doing. Look at this thing going like crazy. Yeah, it's. I was. I was doing my. You know what? We lead with our values. Uh, we, we 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 when we're for good things and a bad and against bad things. Uh, when we put hope on the ballot, and they're like, <laughs> they're like, what are you doing? I go, I'm doing Tom Perez. Oh, it doesn't sound like that. But I'm like, everybody knows that's Tom Perez. <laughs> so why do I bring up Trump? Because guess what, the Democrats, guess what, Barack Obama. Oh, Barack Obama reportedly accepts $400,000 for a Wall Street speech. Thank God, huh? <laughs> where, where else is he going to get money? <laughs> Thank God. You know, you would think at a time when the Democratic Party is fucking wiped out under your leadership, your corporate bullshit leadership. Barack Obama, remember, tried to cut Social Security, tried to cut Medicare. That was his idea. Remember that. He gave us Romney Care with no public option. That was his idea. So when we elect a left wing government and they control the Congress, they control the House, they control the Senate, they control the presidency, we get right wing corporate bullshit anyway. The banks are bigger. They had 10 million foreclosures while he bailed out Wall Street. Took two wars, turned them into seven. Tried to cut Social Security and Medicare. Passed the TP, trying to pass the TPP. Didn't do a thing to help the people at Standing Rock. Occupy Wall Street, got their heads cracked in. He didn't do anything to help the union workers, the teachers in Wisconsin. And now we got Trump. And the problem is the Democrats are seen by their base to be in bed with corporations in Wall Street. So Barack Obama doing this just tells you that the, what he thinks about you as a progressive or a Democrat or a worker or a union member is this. That's what Barack Obama thinks about you, always has, always will. And anybody who thinks otherwise is a white-collared worker making a half a million dollars. I go to parties sometimes. I get invited to parties by people from television and I meet the executives and they love Barack Obama because they're fucking making a quarter million dollars a year. He's the best president I ever. Yeah, because you never had to make a decision between buying a medicine or going to go or paying your rent. <laughs> because you have you're one of you're one of the lucky people in America that has a job that pays them something. You know, Jimmy, I want to add something to this. You know, I'm just as outraged as you are. Like, it's crazy and it's horrible. But I want to point out that he's getting almost twice as much as Hillary Clinton got. Ha. And again, it's a gender issue, I think. He's getting twice as much as he made at president for one speech. It, I mean, why, why would you do he, first of all, He has a $65 million publishing deal. Why would you do, why would, what do you, ah, I need another half mil from a bank. 
just the way the gears work. That's why he got Tom Perez to screw over Keith Ellison. That's why he was pushing the TPP and Hillary lost. That's why he took two wars and turned them into seven. That's why he doesn't give a shit about you. That's why you don't have the public option. That's why, that's why he's taking a half million dollars from the people who kicked 10 million homeowners out of their house. That's why. They're addicted to money. The Democratic Party is nothing more than a fundraising organization and that it's addicted to corporate cash. You need to... Ba- that guy, how he knows how bad this is going to look, and guess what? He doesn't give a shit. He doesn't care. He doesn't care how bad this looks or how bad it looks for the Democrats. Guess who else doesn't care? The Democrats. They don't give a shit. They just voted to start taking corporate money back at the DNC. There is no reason for the Democratic Party to exist. Tom Perez is a fucking sellout to this country. And Keith Ellison needs to buck up and find his balls. Because the Democratic Party is selling this goddamn country down the fucking river. Keith. In case you didn't notice, they screwed you over. And then you buddied up with the guy who screwed you fucking over. Ugh. You need a poster child for a spineless Democrat? It'd be that move right there. Ugh. I had no idea. You know, after they had, if they, I'm sorry, Steph, but do you know if they had the election again right now? Do you know if they had the election again right now, Keith? Hillary would lose again. If they had the election right now, the Democrats would lose to the Republicans again, you fucking dummy. Who do you think, who's the, who's the dummy? Me or the people who can't manage to beat Donald Trump? Sorry, go ahead, Steph. No need to say sorry. Listen, I just think that the unity tur- is turning out to be uh, that the concept of unity in the Democratic Party is unify with Wall Street. Roll over, Democrats. Yes, roll Embrace over. Embrace Wall Street. Bend over some more Dems. And here's our unity tur. We're going to give you platitudes and you're going to... Uh, I guess, live below the poverty line because nobody seems to care about jobs or health care for Americans. Certainly nobody. Hey, how are you going to help the homeless population? They don't even mention. They don't even talk about poor people. They don't even talk about lowering our prison population. They don't talk about any of that stuff. They don't talk about free college, the Democrats. They don't talk about single payer. They don't talk about anything. In fact, what Hillary Clinton did on on her campaign trail was the economy's good. So here's what uh, Eric, by the way, how do you say his last name? Eric Levitz is the writer of this article for the New York Magazine. And he makes some great points. This is from that article. He said, did you really avoid breaking up the big banks because you thought it might undermine financial stability? Or were you on the take? Let's remember, he came into office promising to break up the big banks and re-regulate Wall Street. He made them bigger. He made the banks bigger. He promised to save Main Street while he saved Wall Street. He saved Wall Street and kicked 10 million homeowners out of their house. Screwed them over. Screwed them. Screwed them hard. In favor of who? The people who are giving him a half million dollars to go give a speech. Twice as what he makes as a president for a whole year for one speech. And what does that tell you? He doesn't give a fuck about you. He doesn't give a fuck about your kids. He doesn't give a fuck about this country. He gives a fuck about him and his donors. That's who Barack Obama is. So this Eric goes on to say, did you really think a fracking ban would be bad for the environment? Or were you on the take? No, I, I was just going to let it play out. Just going to let it play out. Like, I mean, both sides. Both need sides. To, need uh, to, well, both sides. You know, the people who are peaceful and the people who are beating the shit out of them, they both sides need to relax. <laughs> One man's sophisticated and pragmatic approach to public policy can be the other man's grab bag of corrupt opportunism. Leaders who sincerely care about the fate of the prog- progressive center as a nationally and globally viable political movement need to push back against this perception by beha- perception. That he's on the take because they take money because they're on the take. It's not a perception. I love how he goes. They need to push. So Eric's now this is when Eric starts to go a little more mainstream. He goes, they need to push back against this perception by behaving with a higher degree of personal integrity than their rivals. It's not a perception. 
They're corrupt. Barack Obama was corrupted. That's not, that's not a mistake that he didn't break up the big banks and that he didn't say bail out Wall Street. It's not a mistake that he didn't stand up for the teachers in Wisconsin. It's not a mistake that he let peaceful protesters get their heads cracked in across the country and occupy Wall It's not a mistake that he took two wars and turned them into seven. It wasn't a mistake that he tried to cut Social Security and Medicare, Barack Obama. These are things, these were his policies. That's who he is. It's not a perception. It's who Barack Obama is. It's not a perception problem. The Democrats are fucking wrecked because they're corporate sellouts and they don't represent people anymore. Well, you know, Jimmy, I'm thinking to myself, uh, now it, it seems kind of clear that yes, we can actually meant yes, we can sell you out. Yes. Yes, we can make the banks bigger. Yes, we can expand our wars. Yes, we can make uh, drugs more expensive. We can, yes, we can cut Social Security. Yes, we can cut Medicare. Yes, we can. We're the Democrats. Yes, we can. Yes, we can get some of our base excited that I'm back in the public spotlight, and then I'll just go make a speech for <laughs> Wall Street. That's what because I, I I saw a lot of stuff on the blogosphere today. Like people were stoked. They're like, "Oh, Barack's back. Maybe he has a message. Maybe he's gonna say, hey, you guys.'" And then the message is, "Hey, I'm going to Wall Street to make a speech. I'm going to go make a ton, shit ton of cash, more money than most people make in their life. I'm gonna go do that for an hour, and then I'm gonna pretend to care." And and you know what? There's the message, everybody. That message is loud and clear. He doesn't care about us. He doesn't care about the future of the country. He just cares about how much more money he can That's earn exactly out of right. office. I mean, didn't Bill Clinton earn over a hundred million dollars after t- leaving office? They they are uh, over a hundred millionaires. Yes, they make they have their their net worth is over that. Yes. Um, so let's read this paragraph again. It says. Leaders who sincerely care about the fate of the progressive center as a nationally and globally viable political movement need to push back against this perception by behaving with a higher degree of personal integrity than their rivals, not by accepting the logic that what's good for the goose is good for the gander, because that's what the Democrats say now. It would be ridiculous for us to not arm ourselves with corporate cash when our opponents are, are, are filling their coffers with corporate cash. So Eric correctly points out in this article that no, becoming exactly like the people you're fighting is the opposite of what you're supposed to be doing. Hey, we got to fight against those guys. Why? Because they're in bed with corporations. How are we going to do it? Let's get in bed with corporations. Fight, fight back against them. So when Barney Frank says that stuff and Tom Perez says that stuff, I mean, people boo them in public. The only way, way they get away with that shit is in television green rooms and on sets of national broadcasting news shows. They don't get that way of that stuff with normal people. And this is, I love people, this is from the article. I love Eric says this. He goes, but still Obama does not need this gig. But uh, Jimmy, I had some open availability and thought, why the fuck not? This is like him pushing the TPP when Hillary was running for president. He didn't give a shit. Hey, this might hurt her. Who cares? I want to get that 400 grand payday coming next month. I got I got, I got 400 grand payday coming. You know that, right? I got to push this fucking TPP. Dog. And both his party and his ideological... Ki- so Obama doesn't need the gig. Plus... His, both his party and his ideological kin the world over could really use some distance from Wall <laughs> Street, given that even the center-left's own technocrats now recognize that the oh. financial industry is an overgrown parasite whose rapacious rent-seeking Im- immiserates working people. That's quite a... That guy's a good writer. Yeah, I like that. That guy's a good... Immiserates? Wow. That's good. Given that the center left's own technocrats now recognize that the financial industry is an overgrown parasite whose rapacious rent sinking immiserates working people. Wow. Barack Obama, I got no problem. Half half a million? Let's go. Wow. So there's your uh there's your reason to vote Democrat. They're fucking worse than they were before.